Good evening and hello world. My name is Maya Sundermeyer and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far I have been able to share my own experiences with the world on what it's like to live with an autism spectrum disorder or Asperger's syndrome. A second thing that I like to do is give my two cents on autism in the media. And a third thing that I like to do is give tips and advice to individuals on the autism spectrum and to their friends and their families and their peers and their mentors and the like. And a final thing that I do is cover topics that I am passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. And in this video blog, what I'm going to do is uh, give tips to uh, those of you who are living on the autism spectrum and you will either be going to work and starting new jobs versus those of you who have been working for a long time and I would say anybody from adolescence and up. And what I wanted to mention first is that yes, uh, every place of employment here in the United States is required by law to have out banners and posters of uh, labor laws and minimum wage laws which are provided by the state and laws and rules and regulations by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Unfortunately, um, there are employers that don't go by all these rules and they just don't care. Like in the case of the individual who was working at Applebee's and for an entire year nobody seemed to really care as to whether or not he was being paid and the only person that was fighting for his rights was his own father I mean the job coaches didn't do anything the employers didn't do anything he, uh, instead they just kept lying to his father and saying that they lost the paperwork yeah leading him on yeah we'll pay you we'll pay you and it sounds like the job coaches ignored the situation when they should have been advocates for him. Other situations that can come up are like sexual harassment. And it doesn't include um, touching and hints that you date this person or you lose your job. It can also mean that um, they could discriminate against you because of the way you dress and the way you look. And they can make comments like, um, okay I notice you dress like a boy you never dress like a girl you must be a homosexual so those kind of comments other times there can be bullying in the workplace and then um, times after that you can have discrimination and unfairness just by having uh, your coworkers ignore the fact that you've gotten married and or you're getting married and they refuse to come to your wedding and they don't get you any presents but they get things and go to everybody else's events uh, but they seem to ignore you and they never even apologize about that and I want to let you guys know that there are some actions that you can take for instance let's say you have a job coach uh, from an agency that comes in every once in a while and that job coach uh, doesn't listen to you I mean you try to tell them that you think something's up and they brush you off with a comment like, oh, they're just kidding. Or they come in and they call you a um, nasty name like Little Miss Pris. And my suggestion to that is uh, if it uh, keeps up, you can contact the agency and talk to the supervisor or the manager of the organization that um, is over your job coaches who you're having problems with. Other things you can do if that doesn't work out, you can contact the Department of Labor. They have a, a division for people with developmental disabilities and sometimes they can help you and they can go undercover and look at the situation to see whether or not there's some funny business or funny business going on. Uh, and another suggestion is when you make those calls, don't say you're, that you're the individual being targeted what you want to do is go anonymous and say hey I work with this person and they've got a disability and they're not being treated very well and sometimes they give you all kinds of connections and networks who are funding the organizations that send the job coaches out to you 
and they're also working very closely with the places of employment where you're being discriminated against. And you can also contact them as well because uh, they, can they can investigate in those. As, again, you have options and you don't have to be treated like that. And finally, another one that you could do is like, uh, like this boy's father. He called up the headquarters and he uh, called them several times when he wasn't getting what his son needed. So anyway, um, I would love to hear your horror stories and I would love to hear as to whether or not you're facing discrimination. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe and share my footage on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and with your agency that works with individuals with autism. Until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I'm signing off now.